Hello and welcome to the Week 9 edition of the Coach's Corner here on Lemonster TV. I'm Todd Robbins, joined as always by Lemonster High School Head Coach and Athletic Director Dave Palazzi as we get you set for Week 9 action. And of course, Week 9 action means the envelope, please. Who has the MIAA bestowed upon Lemonster? The answer to that is right there. Almost right there. It's Westboro uh, is, the, is the team uh, indeed uh, that Lubbinster will uh, will battle uh, this week uh, from the uh, the crossover folks. And coach, we'll talk more in detail about Westboro in a minute. Uh, but uh, a 26 to nothing win uh, for your team versus Algonquin uh, this past week. Uh, certainly uh, nothing that you uh, you could shake a stick at. Uh, it was felt like total control for the first time all year long from start to finish. Yeah, I mean, it's all about defense. I mean, our defense is just playing terrific. I mean, they get a shutout, three points the week before. They're really uh, giving us more opportunities on offense. And, you know, when that happens, I think you see both uh, both sides of the ball really get, gain some confidence and click. But, uh, you know, they just played fantastic to, to get that shutout and give us opportunities on offense to put some points on the board was a really good game. A lot of players actually felt really fantastic about the way this uh, this developed. We had an opportunity to hear from one of them, a guy who was leading the charge down the line, created a lot of space. Zach Calladay had this to say post game. Your night crowd here, everybody into it. You guys roll from start to finish. You guys have believed you could do it all year long. And finally, last two weeks, you've done what you knew you could do. Yes, sir. <laughs> a man of many words. And you're like, I'm done. <laughs> and I've, good night. I've had enough. Talk to me about being out in front of some of these blocks tonight. With this new blocking scheme mm -hmm. and you guys getting downfield, trying to open up holes mm -hmm. for your backs, uh, it's got to be a lot of fun. There was quite a few times tonight you're in the picture and you're trying to find the next person, the last person you're going to get a hit on. Well, it's so fun pulling out around and getting in. Like It's basically being a running back, running down the field <laughs> looking for someone to block. It's the funnest. I love bowling. Favorite thing to do on the field. That's, That's fantastic. Awesome. Uh, I absolutely love it. So here you are. You're through eight weeks of the season. You're two and six. Year hasn't gone the way you guys were hoping, uh, generally speaking. You've got two undetermined opponents from here to the next phase of the season, which, of course, we're on that road to the 137th meeting of Lemonster and Fitchburg at the end of November, about one month from now. So over these next couple of weeks, even though you guys don't know who you guys are going to be playing, what are the things you're looking to get better at as you keep them going forward? Well, I can uh, get more aggressive and keep our conditioning up because Thanksgiving is the biggest game of the season. We got to beat the Berg. Uh, no, beat no, the Berg. No doubt about that. They, that wow. I mean, there's, there's a sense of any I have heard uh, as well, and that is of course a, a, a sentiment out there. Talk to me, of course, about Senior Night tonight. It's always a mix of emotions, right? It's it's your last official home game mm -hmm. at Doyle Field. It comes much earlier. Very likely that over the next two weeks you'll have another game here at mm -hmm. Doyle Field. But a chance tonight to celebrate with the band members, the cheerleaders, and with your fellow teammates who you've been playing with, not just for the last four years here in Lemonster, but through youth football as well. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your teammates and just the, the whole team and camaraderie sensation around this program. I love being with my teammates. We played together since fifth grade in AYF. We have that team bonding. Like We all love each other. It's just a family it's aspect. It's a love fest. Absolutely, <laughs> with, uh, with, without question. As you, uh, you kind of go forward here, and obviously with a, still a number of weeks left and plenty of time to, to create memories, what are the things that you're going to take with you from your four years here with those seniors that you're going to leave with? Um, definitely to never give up, no matter what the score is. I remember sophomore year, uh, we were playing Shepherd Hill r right here at Doyle under the lights, and we were down by three touchdowns and came back to win it in overtime. It's the best feeling. That's all I have to say, just never give up. No place better than under the lights at Doyle Field on a Friday night. Zach, congratulations on Thank a win you tonight. Much. Thanks so much for joining us. Zach Calladay of your Lemon Strike School Blue Devils, a 26 to nothing winner tonight here at Historic <laughs> Doyle Field. And they will play an yes yet undetermined opponent in weeks nine and 10 of and that's Zach Calladay and uh, crew from last <clears throat> week. And Coach, we'll, uh, we'll take a couple of things that Zach pointed to. First of all, he talked about pulling, being like a running back, getting a chance to be out in front. And there were so many times when you looked at that video where you would see whoever the running back was, whether it was Cora calling his own number, whether it was Couch, whether it was Martian, and there was Calladay leading the charge down the field. A couple of times, he overran the block. He was hustling so much, he actually missed the guy he was trying to get to. Well, I, I kind of got on him about that. I said, <laughs> Zach, I mean, you know, when you see no one 
outside of you, turn turn back inside. He goes, I, I know, I thought, I didn't know where the ball was. I ne that never happened to me before, you know, because we, <laughs> usually there's someone to block, but I, I mean, those guys sealing it on the edge to allow him to get around the corner and, um, you know, just both guards and, you know, we got Frank uh, Apoku pulling as well. Yep. Uh, just following the blocks and doing a great job. It's something we put in and, you know, I'm sure as we move on, I mean, people are going to scout a little bit and it'll be more difficult for us to get the edge, but uh, I think it's helping Zach on defense. I mean, he's in the backfield uh, all night, Friday night, so he didn't do a bad job there either. No, not not at all, indeed. And, of course, you talked about uh, the relationship <laughs> among these players, uh, you know, and, and the growth that they've had and the things that he wants to take with him. And the thing that he said, it's that stick to -itiveness. It's that never, ever give up attitude. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, we've had a few rough seasons, you know, starting out 0 for 6, 0 for 7, you know, these past few years. And um, those guys just keep playing. I mean, they're going to keep playing hard. Uh, try to play the games from start to finish and, and really work hard and they, they stick together There's been no finger pointing so you know I'm proud of them and I think they've learned a lot about uh, You know just about life in general and not winning games and sort of uh, making it uh, Making a great uh, show of it on Friday night. It's many weeks too early to talk about it But uh, beat the Berg sounds like a really great button to me yeah, I mean, these guys are fired up. I guess, you know, we got to take it one game at a time, but everybody obviously knows. I mean, Pittsburgh's out of the playoffs, Lemonster's out of the playoffs, and, you know, it, we're all looking forward to Thanksgiving. We got the next two weeks to play, uh, but in the end, we're, we're working towards our. Uh, our playoff game with Pittsburgh, so to speak. I mean, it's Thanksgiving. I mean, let's call it for what it is. But, uh, you know, we have two weeks before that, but it's in, I think it's in the back of everybody's mind. Indeed it is. Let's take a look at a moment that I want to ask Coach about. But first, uh, let's take a, a jump over to Twitter. It's this new feature that our, our friend Bradley Bedard has been doing. It's called Bradley's Favorite Moment. Bradley's Favorite Moment from the other night. Uh, this highlight will be something to talk about. As we welcome you back to live action on fourth down and nine to go. Lemonster goes with the toss pass. It was the end around give to Rodriguez. He rolls out to the right. He throws that pass to J.C. Cora, who makes the catch, finds the room across the 30 to the 25, and it's enough for a Lemonster first down, officially marked down at the 27-yard line, Kate. Now, one of the things you have to remember, Brian Rodriguez, one of the backup quarterbacks for this yes, team. Yes, he's been the Wildcat quarterback in years past, and certainly been possess the ability to throw the football. Shocking play there, but it keeps the drive alive. So, Coach, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about that play and kind of it, where it came from. Uh, it started off looking like an end around, then all of a sudden it became this reverse, and then all of a sudden it's now not just a reverse, it's a reverse pass, and uh, and down the field it, it goes. Talk to me about the iteration of it and just how many moving pieces of the rock. Well, obviously, I mean, we've run the sweep before, uh, you know, against on fourth down or third and short, so we're just trying to, you know, toss it to Adam, and, and he's going to toss it back to Brian on the reverse, and, you know, we're going to send our quarterback down the right sideline, kind of like Brady did last year when he dropped it in the, in the playoffs, or in the Super Bowl, actually. Uh, they ran it out of shotgun, and they gave it to the back. Um, the back came around and pitched it to somebody else, a receiver, and he threw it to Brady. But kind of the same play, but it's out of uh, quarterback under the center, pitching it to the tailback and coming back around. And Brian did a nice job of tucking it away and then pulling it back at the last minute and throwing it to J.C. Cora. Um, we saw his hands. He was a receiver last year, and we really used, utilized that, and he was able to get the first down. I mean, that's really all that matters. 26 to nothing, Lemonster, a victor over Algonquin in this Week 8 matchup to conclude that regular season portion of the schedule at 2 and 6. Let's talk a little bit about other scores from around Week 8 action. See some of those uh, and other games that were going on out there thus far. Uh, the, uh, the action looks like this. Unfortunately, I don't think I have those scores. Coach, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have them on the sheet in front of me. We'll get back to those scores later. Hopefully, they're on your screen uh, at home. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on and talk a little bit about the, uh, the power ratings process uh, and, of course, getting into that crossover process that we are, uh, we're looking at. Um, and, and that would be the, uh, the system whereby um, you have a meeting on a Sunday, uh, and that Sunday everybody gets together and, and piles in there. You've, uh, you've been the head coach and been part of the process to whatever degree that allows. Uh, now you're part of that process as athletic director. Has your perspective changed any? Uh, not at all. <laughs> um, yeah, Justice I, in the dark 
<laughs> 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 no, I mean, we've been down this road. I mean, you know, you get points for who you play, and uh, the top four teams in each league make it. Uh, you know, it's just one of those things where the, everybody's schedule differs. But, you know, the f t top four teams this year were, were Doherty, uh, Wachusett, St. John's, and Shrewsbury in our league. And, you know, the rest of us three are out, and they've done it in every every other division in Central Mass. But uh, it's a state playoff, so we, we only, for those people out there that haven't heard the story before, um, they kind of go by the number of people you have in your school. And uh, Central Mass, we really don't have enough teams to have a Division One and a Division Two, so we start off at Division Three with St. John, Shrewsbury, Lemonster, on and on. Um, so we only have seven teams in our, our division in Division Three, um, and then we go four, five, six, seven, eight. So, you know, you, who you play, you get 10 points for a win, you get two points for everybody else's wins, and they compile um, all of this uh, mathematical information, and then the top four teams in each division, they go to the playoffs, and then they figure out the other teams. We'll see the math here uh, for the power ratings. Uh, Doherty finishes the season 8-0, and a 19.25 power rating, followed by Wachusett, St. John's, and Shrewsbury, the top four in Lemonster. Uh, speaking to the strength of that schedule, Coach, with just the two wins, leapfrogging from the bottom just a couple of weeks ago to finish in that fifth position. Two and six record, but a 9.90 power rating. Speaks a lot to the strength of schedule and, of course, the, the victories that you guys were able to achieve. Not only, by the way, speaking to, to leapfrogging, Wachusett with, uh, with the upset, uh, you know, benefit where St. John's gets upset by Marlboro and all of a sudden you leapfrog into the second position. If you're Wachusett, that's a much better place to be. Yeah, it's certainly much better when you're home, particularly at Wachusett against St. John's, but that uh, that was a 38-31 game. I mean, that's going to be a great game. I mean, I see all these four teams uh, uh, evenly matched. They, they both, uh, I think they're very similar. Yep. Um, I would think uh, Doherty has the best inside six players. I think their four down linemen and their two inside backers are um, better than anybody else's, at least that's from my perspective, from what uh, we played. Um, however, I think, um, you know, the, the defensive backs, I'd probably give to Shrewsbury. So it's gonna come down to a matchup. I mean, you get St. John's playing Doherty, where they may not be able to defend a pass with their corners and their safeties, but they can get the rush on. Um, so I, I think you got four teams that are very uh, equal, uh, equally uh, talented as one another. It's just going to come down to the matchups, turnovers, and things like that. But it should be pretty exciting. I, I couldn't pick who's going to win out of the four. It's going to be close. In, indeed, it will be. And the bracket looks like this. When you uh, when you see them all organized, you see the benefits uh, that uh, that Doherty has. When you go out right and you uh, and you just win, you get yourself that first position uh, with that eight and zero record. Shrewsbury clocks in at four. They'll go one versus four. That game will be Friday night, seven o'clock, Foley Stadium in Worcester, the site, and then watch. It. Again, the benefactor of a St. John's loss to Marlboro leapfrogs into that second position. So you knew who you were playing in that 2-3 spot, but much better to be the two and host that game at Hal Lane Field in Holden on Friday night, November the 2nd. Also a 7 o'clock kickoff. Winners will advance to the Central Final, either to be played on Friday the 9th or Saturday the 10th. And the winner is the MIA Central Champion. will play the crossover teams from the West. And so those are the things that we will look to in the, uh, the coming days and weeks. And of course, for Lemonster, we know that they're upcoming schedule looks like this, adding that week nine position at Westboro on a Friday night, uh, November <coughs> the 2nd, 7 o'clock is the kickoff there. Brand new lights, brand new turf, brand new everything at Westboro. Just finished a renovation project there, so they're, they're very excited uh, to be able to, uh, to show that off with new teams coming in. And of course, we'll find out about week 10 in the, uh, in the weeks to come. Coach, I want to run this by you while we're talking about this process. This is from Twitter, uh, and it's a tweet from Coach Justin McKay about the following statistics relative to this playoff situation. He said, quote, there are 13 Central Western Mass schools who are 500 or better who won't be in the playoffs. Simultaneously, there were 27 schools who were under 500 entering into the playoffs in Eastern Mass last week. For all who care about Massachusetts high school football, we got to find a way to fine tune this. Coach, you've got winless teams that qualified in Eastern Mass, not just sub 500 winless teams that qualified in an Eastern, uh, sorry, in Eastern Mass and in Central and West. I mean, Central Mass, this one is the staggering one that sticks out to me. Seven and one Oxford out did not qualify for the playoffs. I, I just, uh, you know, it, 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 I've said it, I said it when, I said it in 2013, and this is this was against Westboro. Mm -hmm. We we were. Uh, we were 7-0 and at the time. We were playing Westboro, who was 0-7. And, and the coach said, this is ridiculous to be in the playoffs at 0-7. And, and I said, well, I said, if we were playing a whole year, we'd be playing you anyway. Yep. Would you rather be 0-7 in the playoffs 
or not have it just be a regular season game in 0-7. And, um, and we played them, we won, and then we moved on to the next round. So I think Eastern Mass, what they do is they go seven weeks and everybody makes the one plays eight, two plays seven. So that, I believe, is the only way you can do this to make it equitable. Then you don't have to worry about your schedule. You don't have to argue about your schedule. You're just in the playoffs. Just play it out um, and let the chips fall where they may. I think, you know, a lot of people were complaining a few years ago when you had, you know, teams that didn't have a win. How can they make the playoffs? I mean, you can't think rationally when you're trying to develop a system, a playoff system, with only seven or eight weeks in a season. I mean, try to put that into perspective. Seven or eight weeks. Some basketball teams have 20 games, baseball. Mm -hmm. Your team isn't really developed over the course of a year. I mean, you like us, we've had injuries. We lost our center. Running. I mean, by the time we get it going, it's the season's over. We, you know, we're looking towards Thanksgiving. Um, it's too bad, but that's just the way, the way it is. I mean, I think if you're going to stick to this playoff um, rationale, one of the two things you have to do is just let every team make it, or at least the top eight teams make it, and then you don't have to worry about scheduling and, you know, who doesn't make it or 7-1 Oxford not making it. Um, you know, I saw their schedule that they're in rebuilding mode and they played some teams that obviously were not very good because mm -hmm. if they were, they'd be in. But, the, but th that doesn't take anything away from their program and what they're trying to accomplish. I mean, why, why punish them um, and, and remove those kids from a playoff situation where they won seven games and they're not in it? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I imagine as a coach who in that situation, it's going to be very difficult to explain to your players. You're, you're going to go out and play a team in Auburn this week who's talented, three and five. It should be, make a nice matchup, but you are seven and one. You won seven out of the eight games they put in front of you prior to the playoffs, and that still wasn't good enough. It's going to be awfully hard to deliver a message like that. Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, the, the coaches, and it, it keeps getting voted in, the, the state playoff system, which I don't mind it, but it's just they got to find a way to make it equitable. It's, it's not equitable. I mean, you have teams in our league. We're the only team in our league who plays everybody. Shrewsbury only plays four games in our league because they play watch who's at Thanksgiving, and that's, I mean, let them play game one, yeah. you know, and then play. I mean, I don't know. I, I know there's a lot of legitimate arguments for that, and I'm, they've discussed them all, but I think they got to read. Now that they have some data to look back on, I don't think they had any, any of this data to look mm -hmm. back on. Now that they have that data to look back on and say, hey, look, you know, let's fix this. Let's make it so it's equitable and, and move forward. And hopefully that's what uh, we do. Funny you should say that. Play your Thanksgiving opponent maybe one other time during the year. Uh, I'll tell you, there was some conversation, uh, you know, during our broadcast last week that maybe a Lemonster Fitchburg game week nine wouldn't be a bad place. Get wet people's whistle before you get into the uh, the end of the year. Thursday night kickoff. Uh, I was going to say. Before the season starts, right? Lemonster Fitchburg. Nothing we'll wrong. tally it up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. I don't think anybody would argue about that. Let's go inside Blue Devils Athletics coach and of course we've been talking a little bit about that athletic director position but let's talk about some of the other teams there were on the verge obviously in other sports of starting their playoff runs for boys soccer and girls volleyball big chance for them yeah you know I saw the girls volleyball game uh, last week against Air Shirley and it, it was just a tremendous game they were up to nothing and you know uh, Air Shirley hit the 24 mark and they get 25 and they go into the next set but uh, you know we battled back tied it up 24 all Went ahead 25-24, then it got tied. You got to win it by two at that point. We won two, 27-25. So they were all excited. Uh, John Antonetti, Samantha Como, those coaches are doing a wonderful job. Girls are excited. Program's excited. Uh, you know, they find out tomorrow who they're going to play. Um, hopefully we get a home game, and, and we'll see from there, get some fans at the game. But uh, we also got boys soccer who uh, they play Westboro tomorrow, they're playing today, um, and their, their drawing will be tomorrow as well, uh, tomorrow evening, or I think Wednesday, one, one of the two days, yep. but uh, we'll find out who we play there. So we got two teams in the playoffs. Very good. Good see a good start to the uh, to the year. Got to get some uh, some folks <coughs> qualified there. Other things on the verge here. I've got to imagine where. I mean, we hate to look too far ahead, but uh, you're also on the verge of winter season, which means uh, potentially a whole another batch of athletes that need to roll through, go through the preseason stuff, and of course get in their physicals and all those other forms that need to be in as well. Yeah, you know, we got the physicals going <laughs> on, user fees. I mean, we got a lot going on. Uh, signing a lot of kids up. I'll, I'll be calling for a meeting shortly. I just got to see the schedule at the high school. Uh, 
busy time of the year with parent teacher night and Thanksgiving coming around so we'll try to squeeze that in but we're looking forward to um, a lot of good winter uh, sports teams get some kids involved and you know really ratchet that up I'm pretty excited for that uh, I won't be coaching so you know it might be a little easier on me but uh, I'm pretty excited to see uh, what we can do in the winter as well never a bad idea to get those physicals in early uh, <laughs> it's not, nothing worse than sitting out the first couple days of practice because you're waiting on a physical yeah uh, maybe we get some doctors my plan will just get them in we'll do them all in May and then everybody will have them for the year I mean how hard is that right I mean we gotta we gotta do that you're, you're reminding me of a <laughs> colleague of mine who is it teaches with me at Watertown and he was a student there many years ago and the nurse who just retired a couple of years ago she used to do the athletic physicals in the 80s so he would just look and go, Oh boy! Yeah. And you just, you know, those, but those were the days. You know, it was it was a lot easier that way. And in fairness to the parents, and in all seriousness, seriousness, if if there are parents out there, you want to get your child a physical now. I know CVS takes walk-ins down by um, the mall, down yep. by CVS, down by the mall, and you need to like try to make a meeting or try to set your child up to get a physical otherwise doing it the last minute they're not going to let you do it and then you're going to wait and you're not going to be able to play until you get a physical and that's the complicated aspect of things let's talk about week and nine action other great crossover matchups that are available we've seen the bracket for the division three playoffs here's some of the other games that are going on around the region algonquin will travel to fitchburg a battle of a one and seven and a four and four matchup there north middlesex gets the trip down to dudley two and six versus three and five there. Grand Dunstable goes out to Quabbin in 0-7 versus a 2 and 6. Then you have that 7 and 1 Oxford. They've earned a home game. They'll host Auburn at the 2 and 6 mark. And then Abby Kelly Foster with a 1 and 7 mark will go to Foley Stadium and play Worcester North with a 3 and 5 record. So those are some of the other games there as well. And some of those teams, uh, well, at least one, may just very well show up on Lemonster's schedule um, in the weeks to come in week 10 action. You'll stay tuned here to the Coach's Corner for more information information on that coach let's talk about this week nine action with Westboro uh, team that you've seen fairly regularly over the last so many years you were just talking about 2013 they're an opponent that's never on the first eight weeks of the schedule but they seem to crop up whether it was a playoff matchup or whether it was a, a matchup that comes in this crossover round so you guys have got some familiarity with one another best to compare them to Algonquin a little bit they as I seem to remember Algonquin it's seemingly somewhat similar yeah a little bit I mean a little bit of Shrewsbury maybe okay and, and kind of the wing the double wing Delaware rolling out yep um, they do a really good job of, of various uh, formations rolling the quarterback out um, you know defensively that three four I mean what choose it and Shrewsbury it was not uh, it was tough sledding against their defense I mean their defense is pretty good um, you know Fitchburg only scored seven points off of them and and you know they're, they're they're a good team I mean they played I mean I, I looked at their schedule like they played Shepard I mean they played Wachusett, it they played Shrewsbury so they're they're kind of like us with our schedule they've had a very difficult schedule so their record is really not indicative of of their uh, you know who they are as a team so they're gonna be a very difficult team to uh, a very difficult challenge for us, particularly on offense with their defense. I seem to remember defensively, they put a lot of guys inside. They try to stuff that box, and of course, with some of the things you're trying to do offensively now, uh, those two things may not be congruent with one another. Yeah, they got they got eight in a box. I mean, they're flying around. I mean, they're going to be tough. I mean, they're going to be a tough team. I watched both uh, films against Wachusett and Shrewsbury, and um, you know they do a lot of good things on D. So we got to be ready to go. Indeed, they will in a battle uh, that will in. Sue in the coming days. Uh, it is Friday night, November the 2nd, week nine action. Lemonster travels to a recently renovated Westboro Stadium. Here's the broadcast information on where you can be a part of it. World Series over. Red Sox champions, K-Zone airwaves clear. AM 1280, 105.3 FM. We'll have the broadcast along with a live stream at WPKZ.net. Back to our Facebook Live look in 10 minutes before our pregame at 620. Lemonster TV has been with us all the way and will continue to be with us. Verizon Files, Comcast Xfinity, Channel 32 and 9 respectively. Replays are at Lemonster TV on YouTube and they will have full play-by-play -play on Facebook Live beginning with kickoff right about 7 o'clock on Friday night. So lots of ways to be a part of it and we're winding down the stretch of our 20 games for 20 years. Last two games, games 19 and 20 so to speak. From 2000, Lemonster versus Whitman Hansen October the 30th, that's tomorrow night and then from 1999, 
first season of broadcasts on Lemonster TV, or what was then known as LHS TV 36, Lemonster and St. John's, that game on Thursday, November the 1st. And then <coughs> wrapping up this week, we can tell you we jump right into our next collection of archive footage and that is our classic countdown from november the second <laughs> one game every night all the way until thanksgiving on the thursday in november thursday the 23rd i do believe um, so a game every single night coach from 1999 to 2017 chance to see a lot of games over the last 20 years that have been a part of lemonster tv as well so certainly some excitement there to be a part of and we are uh, down the home stretch here i know there was a great event uh, uh, that was held by the Lumbus Blue Devils Football Club uh, last week at the Veterans Center. Uh, success? Yes, very good. Ne we never want to thank everybody, absolutely. No, we, uh, we appreciate seeing people come out and the community support for being a part of it as well. That is going to do for the Week 9 edition of the Coach's Corner. We're back right here on Monday night with Week 10 action. We'll tell you who Lemonster draws in Week 9, plus we'll talk uh, Week 10, excuse me, and we'll talk about that Week 9 matchup as well. All that coming up next Monday night, 6 o'clock right here on Lemonster TV. For Lemonster High School Head Coach and Athletic Director Dave Palazzi, I am Todd Robbins. On behalf of Kate Robbins, Carl Pamarini, and all of us, here at Lemonster TV. Until next time, so long, everybody.